Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a little review of the Life of Fred math curriculum, and after I'm done, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts on how it worked for our family. Life of Fred is really starting to pick up in popularity. I'm seeing that there are so many families that are using it right now. But I know that there are a lot of newer homeschooling families that really aren't sure what it is. So I thought that I would just give you a little glimpse into what it's all about. Life of Fred is a math curriculum that the author wrote for people well, or for kids who hate math. And we, I'm sure you know that there are a lot of kids who hate math. And a big reason for that is because of what is called the drill and kill method, where they're given, you know, 25, 30, sometimes even 50 math problems a day to do. And they end up getting so burned out that they just don't even want to look at a math problem anymore. So Stanley Schmidt, the author, his, his philosophy is to teach kids how it's used in everyday life and he also tries to make numbers fun for kids which is really as he points out in one of his books mathematicians they don't like the way that math is taught in schools and mathematicians they basically say that what they do is they play with numbers so a lot of a lot of that um, attitude is put into these books he um, he really does try to, to make people understand that math can really be fun so this this curriculum is far different from any other math curriculum that you've probably seen. It is literature based, first of all. Literature based means that this math curriculum is written through a story. So we have a story of a little five-year-old math professor named Fred. And this story goes all throughout from the elementary books up through the, the high school series. Um, and actually it only covers just a very short period of his life. It doesn't even like start when he's five and go up to when he's like 18 or something. No, it just covers a very short period of his life. It's just that a lot of stuff happens to Fred in that time. So since it's literature based, there is going to be a lot of reading in it. Some kids might be okay with that. Others might prefer for their parents to read it to them. And no matter which way you do it, you know, it's perfectly fine. It's up to, it's up to your family. At the end of each chapter, there is a year turn to play. And if you note, uh, now I should say the year turn to play is the equivalent of like the, uh, the, the activities, or not the activities, like the lesson review or you know the problems that, that kids are supposed to do at the end of each math lesson. So that's what this is, your turn to play. This is when your kids show what they've learned in the chapter. And if you might have noticed, there are only six problems in this year turn to play. And that is really indicative of the whole uh, Life of Fred, at least the elementary math series and the upper elementary. Um, he does not believe in the drill and kill method. He only will give the kids, I'd say on average, between six and seven math problems for each chapter. Some of them have as little as even one, depending on what it is. Others might have 10, but on average, I would say that it's probably about six. And I think that is really where a lot of parents start to have trouble accepting that Life of Fred was written to be a complete math, math curriculum, which it was. Um, I know a lot of people use it as a supplement, and you could definitely do that, and I actually think that's a good idea, but it was written to be a complete curriculum. So that actually does turn a lot of parents off that they don't have a whole lot of problems to do at the end of each chapter. But that was his point, you know. He didn't want to make math so boring and so stressful for kids that they just wouldn't want to do it at all anymore. Now I will say that getting up to maybe around dogs, I'm not sure if dogs is the first one, this is the fourth book in the series. This might be the first book where they actually have at the end of some chapters what they call a row of practice. I'm going to try to find one right here. And what a row of practice is, is they give a line of problems at the end of the year turn to play, and your child is supposed to copy them down and do those on top of the, the rest of the problems. So they have the year turn to play, and then they have a row of practice that they're also supposed to do. This does not happen at the end of, of each um, chapter, but it does happen in pretty many once you get to dogs. 
Now my kids really did like that aspect of it. They liked the your turn to play. I think a lot of times they like the your turn to play better than the actual problems, but I'll get into that a little bit later. And also another thing that I would like to point out is that in the book, I believe it's Honey. When goldfish, they start learning multiplication. In honey, they really get into uh, multiplication. And your child is actually encouraged to make their own what are called honey cards, which are multiplication flashcards. So that is a really good idea. And I like that at the beginning of each chapter, after your child makes these, these honey cards, it says that you have to earn the right to, to move on to the next chapter. And see if you says here, it says, do you have a minute? Before you begin this chapter, you have a little work to do to earn the right to continue reading Fred's adventures. Here is the official procedure for honey cards. And then he goes on to explain that your child has to go through their honey cards before each chapter, which I think is phenomenal practice for multiplication. So there is that. Um, for, for those of you parents who are a little bit iffy about not having so many problems, there are some reinforcements like that in these books. So after the elementary series, and I should tell you that they do go up from apples to jelly beans, and these are not in alphabetical order anymore because I just took them out of order, but that's the elementary series. They do not give a specific age that your child should start doing these books. All they say is that your child should know their basic addition and subtraction before they start these books. That's a good thing to, to know first and then move on to that, which is why a lot of times I was not starting Life of Fred until second or third grade when I was sure that my kids really had that down pat. Also, I do want to say each of these books is only about 18 or 19 chapters long. So if you do this five days a week, which we did not, but if you do it five days a week, you could finish each book in about four weeks time. After the elementary series comes the intermediate series, which is kidneys, liver, and mind shaft. And these books are basically the same sort of setup as the elementary series. It's just that, of course, you know, it, it's harder now. And I'd say the average age for doing the intermediate series is probably upper elementary school. Um, in, in some cases, maybe lower um, middle school. But again, it doesn't matter. It, it really goes based on your child's ability. And I will even say that the author... I really, really suggest that if you get these, you do read the note to parents in the beginning of each book because it's so helpful. And he really does recommend that if you breeze through the elementary series and finish by the time your child is in, say, like third grade or something, he says that you should not move on to the intermediate series right away because he really does believe that some of these concepts have to be based on maturity. So he says that you should actually go back through and go through the whole elementary series again because, and this is true, he said that um, your kids can still pull new things out of it. And I don't know if you've ever watched a movie, you know, sometimes you can watch a movie three times and when you see it the fourth time, you, you, you think, oh, I never saw that before, I never thought of that before. And that really does happen in these books too. So anyway, so that is the intermediate series. Again, mainly like the elementary, just harder. After the intermediate series, comes the pre-algebra series, which consists of fractions, decimals and percents, elementary physics, pre-algebra one with biology, and pre-algebra two with economics. And yeah, did you notice that? There is physics in there, and biology, and economics. And that is actually another philosophy of the author that I really, really agree with, is that since he believes that, um, Life is not broken up into subjects, which I do say that all the time. That math should not be taught completely separately as like a separate entity from everything else. So what he really does, not just in these books where he specifies like physics, he, throughout all of the books, he brings in all areas of life and puts them in the stories. So like for example, in the elementary series, um, it mentions hyperbole, it mentions litotes, um, it has your, it talks about sentence structure in these math books. So how many math books do that? Um, it talks about deciduous trees. It talks about obligate carnivores. So these are really a great way for you to combine subjects is through these Life of Fred math books. So I'm going to just say that. Now, if you look at these uh, pre-algebra books, they are thicker. 
Um, I think that there's about 30 something chapters in the fractions and decimals and percents and then a little bit more as you get farther along. Now, once your child gets to these books, they are going to have more practice than they did in the other ones. Because once you get to these books, there are something called bridges. After about every five chapters, your child will have to complete a bridge. Now, it's quick to point out that these are not tests, um, but what it is is that your child has to answer nine out of 10 questions right in order to move on to the next chapter. Um, now, your child does get five tries, so if they don't get it right the first time, the next day they can do the second try and try again. And what they say is that if your child does not get it by the fifth try, they should actually go back and go through those, those chapters with your child again to help them understand. So it, they do have more practice in these. And I will also point out that once they actually get to the books that actually say pre-algebra, like this is in the pre-algebra series, but it doesn't specifically say pre-algebra. Um, once you get to the books that say pre-algebra, then the author gives your child permission to use a calculator. Um, that's entirely up to you as the parent whether you want to let them do that, but the author says, hey, if you've, you've gotten this far, you should know all of the basics now, so if you want to use a calculator since these problems are getting a little bit harder, go right ahead. And if you think about it, you know, your child is going to be using a calculator in everyday life, and so it, it's really a good skill to have anyway to know how to use that. After the pre-algebra series is the high school series. Now, the high school series, I only have beginning algebra and advanced algebra. We have not gotten to Life of Fred geometry um, or anything beyond that. I know that it goes all the way up through calculus and even beyond that but we personally have only gotten up through advanced algebra. Now, as you can see, these are definitely meatier than the other ones are. Um, if you look, I have the expanded edition, and I actually, this one's the expanded edition too in the advanced algebra. The expanded edition actually includes more, more problems, more practice problems for your child. So that might actually easier your, your mind a little bit if you're worrying, again, about there not being enough problems for them to do. I actually have two kids right now doing these problems, and not these problems, the, the beginning algebra book. And so there does come a time where they will have like say three or four days in a row of no reading the story, they're actually doing nothing but problems on those days. And I really like that because I like that it's giving them that extra practice. Um, rather than just reading and doing like five because now we're going to get into my opinion on this. <laughs> um, I am, I totally agree with kids. They should not have, they should not have to do the drill and kill method at all. I completely agree with that. But I believe that some kids really do better with more practice. So some children might do great with, with answering five questions at the end of each chapter in these Life of Fred books. Um, other kids maybe should just do this as a, a supplement. And I'm actually speaking from my own experience because we actually, we've been using Life of Fred for a few years now. And we, I love this curriculum. I would not be doing this review if I did not love this curriculum. And I, right now I should point out, I am not affiliated with this publisher at all. I just, I am, so I'm not an affiliate, nothing like that. I just really, really like this and I want to let you know about this resource. But what I have found with my children is that we used it for several years and what I just noticed, maybe within the last few weeks, is that some of my kids seem to have hit a wall where nothing is clicking with them anymore. And I'm starting to think that that could very well be because they did not have enough practice on the foundational skills. And again, I know that there are people out there who really love this curriculum and it works great just as is. But 
I'm gonna say it again, there are some kids who need a little bit more than that. And in those cases, it is okay to supplement. It really, really is okay to just supplement and make sure they still have those foundational skills. You could, you could still have some fun with Fred, but you could also kind of ease your mind a little bit and give your kids the extra practice that some of them, they, they really do need. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I think one of the main reasons that we were still doing this, I honestly think that last year already, I was kind of noticing that my kids were not getting the concepts anymore. But I love Fred so much that I kind of didn't want to admit it. I was so intent on sticking with this curriculum. And I, if you know me at all, I am one of those people that if something is not working for, for me, I have no problem tossing it, none at all. So. If I was really grasping on this tightly to this curriculum, you know that it really is a good curriculum and I really wanted it to work for my kids. But at this point in time, we are not using, well actually I should say my non-high schoolers are not using Fred at all right now. We have actually gone back to doing some workbooks because I really do think that they need to just get some more practice on these foundational skills. Not to say that we're never gonna do Life of Fred again with them, but right now I just think that's best for them. My high schoolers, on the other hand, it's funny, this year I had planned on them both using no-nonsense algebra, but they both ended up wanting to do Life of Fred algebra. So here we are, you know, a couple months into the school year because we started in July, and I have all the kids that I had planned on using Life of Fred all year are not using it, and the two kids that I had planned on not using Life of Fred are using it and isn't that how homeschooling goes so I hope that I covered everything um, if you have any questions ask away um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed I would love if you would do that and I hope you have a great day